Kubo has a little bell that he finds and then he loses. Like every month he loses it and then he finds it a month later. He plays for it for like 10 minutes and he loses it again. But he absolutely loves it, yep. If Gigi wasn't in the way, that would be gone. Look how annoyed Gigi is at this turn of events. Like, what? how dare you? I was also thinking that I'll do these vlogs for a while whilst I'm working on this project just so that I have time dedicated to working on it. I'm obviously going to bring back a couple of challenge videos just to like mix it up but for this Wednesday video it's going to be this chatty stuff again because you guys seem to like the last one and I really like doing it and again it gives me time to work on this, this, this thing that I'm, I'm trying to do here. So I have finished writing the comic. It came out to 13 pages which is quite funny and now I'm just going to print it off and see what it looks like, maybe read it through, just scribble out with using a pencil, different things. Thanks, printer. So I accidentally wheeled across <laughs> the first page because it fell out the printer and went onto the floor. Oh well, but this is going to be my rough guide to what it is. So what I've done is just put panel what happens in the panel and then if, if the characters say anything then I put their speech there. So, so yeah. it's now Friday night, like a complete cool person that I am, I'm working on my comic <laughs> and I just did some thumbnails, rough thumbnails on this, my script and then I do like a little panel layout to see what I would like it to um, be, helps me figure out a composition for each panel. It helps me visualize what the end product would look like. So yeah, just working out some type of style. Still really just working on that. Take a long time because I want to get it really right. Um, I decided that the house that she's renting is going to be an old refurbished lighthouse because I thought that would be an interesting dynamic to the story. I drew a bike here for no reason, just because I felt like drawing a bike. I think I'm getting closer to the kind of style I want. I think this might be something to consider. Um, I'm having a difficult time figuring out her design. Because I want it, I don't know, I want it to be quite cartoony but still quite realistic. So it's still quite creepy. So I'm just doing lots of little studies to, to see what I can kind of come up with. And I'm looking on Pinterest at waves and stuff like that. So it's really helpful. That's it. That's my Friday evening and I will update you well, the next time that I've done more. I'm gonna probably work for a few hours now because I'm enjoying it and we have no plans. So anyway, I don't know why I'm rambling on about that. Time to do some more doodles and stuff. Sorry about the light in here. It's absolutely terrible, but I want to work in here just because I have like the iMac, put the TV on, TV, Netflix. So I've had my script ready to go. And I think today what I'm going to do is some expression sheets for the design of my character. Because last night I was um, trying to draw her out. I don't know what I showed you. So hopefully I'm not going over stuff again. But yeah, try drawing out different faces and stuff. Maybe what she would look like in some scenes that I see in my head. And I quite like this style. I drew this with pencil, then I rubbed out the lines, and I really like the white hair and her being like pure white against the colours. I think it makes her really pop out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it that way, but it's worth I'm gonna do some experiments today with that. Here's another one. I need to finish. Yeah, so that's where I'm at today. Got my coffee, got my uh, references for some expressions, and I've got this show called Safe. And Chris is watching some game tournament that I don't care about, so I'm sorry about the noise. It is now Sunday afternoon and made some progress. I honestly can't remember what I showed you, so I'll cut it out if I have. I was doing some studies of, of this book because I really liked the style and I really wanted to emulate that or see how the artist has drawn these guys because I know I want to have a guy in the beginning. And then I just did this, but then it came through a bit of a ba breakthrough. So this is kind of the style that I want it to look like. I still haven't got her character design down properly, but I really want to use, because I used tracing paper in the past for drawing on top of, and I really like the way that the ink goes down on it. That's 
sounds a bit bizarre, it gives me something tactile to work with. So this is tracing paper and I've drawn on the background the Copics and then pencil for texture and just a suggestion of the background. And then I drew her on tracing paper and I've stuck her over the top of the colours behind. And then I add a little bit of rosiness to her cheeks and face because I think she's going to be um, quite a pinky uh, rosacea kind of person. Then I thought like, oh, I'll just do a little experiment with the tracing paper as the image of the lighthouse. So these clouds are tracing paper, this lighthouse is tracing paper, and this here. So I drew this sketch of an in situ illustration of my character. So a kind of situation that she might be in. So um, she's in her kitchen reading a book and she's got her boxes around her of stuff. And then I did a little study of how the comic might look. But I really don't like these colours, but I like the way it turned out. So this is all tracing paper. And basically I did some colours in the background. So this looks like it's further away in the distance. And I think it gives a really nice way to create distance and details. But I'm still, still experimenting with that. But I think this is kind of the style of what I'm going to do. Sort of. Yeah, so Sunday afternoon, um, we're going to go for a walk now because we need to get out and get some sunlight. I mean, yesterday we went to my parents' house for ages. We had a barbecue and stuff, which was really nice. But now it's time to go outside again. Gigi! Hey, everybody. It's um, Tuesday morning. You cannot see anything. Let me move some stuff. I showed you guys this stuff yesterday and well not yesterday I took kind of took Monday off because it was a bank holiday here and Chris had the day off as well and I was just feeling you know when you have a little bit of a rut and you think I should just rest um, I felt like doing that because I had been working all weekend to be fair I didn't really feel like the surge of inspiration yesterday I just felt like just doing nothing for some reason anyway one of you guys said a good way to loosen up was to start backwards so like if i did the line work first then and then the coloring then i should do the coloring first and then the line work so what i did was i colored in some squares and then i did like portraits of guys faces because there's going to be a guy in the beginning of the comic who is basically showing our main character around the place that she's wanting to rent so it gives it gives a chance for our main character to have some dialogue with someone because she's mostly going to be alone throughout the comic it gives us a chance to understand her a little bit more if she can express herself naturally through conversation because I don't think I mean you do talk to yourself a little bit but you would never like say stuff about yourself aloud like oh I'm I'm an artist like you know what I mean you wouldn't you just wouldn't unless you're talking to a camera I did consider making her a youtuber or something so that Gigi was using the litter tray, but I don't think anybody wants to hear that in the background, so <laughs> I paused it. Um, what I was saying was I was going to make her a YouTuber or something like that, but then I thought that was a little bit on the nose. Like, they say write from your own experiences, but that, that would be too much like... Is this person trying to emulate myself? I don't know, you know? I, but the only reason I would have made her a YouTuber is that... She would be speaking to a camera and we could get to know a little bit more about her but I think we know enough about her by the time that this guy is out of the picture to feel empathy for her and to kind of understand her emotions. I think she's going to be, she's on the phone a couple of times to, I don't know, in my head it's her sister but it could be anybody, um, I think that will be up to the reader's imagination to decide who she's on the phone to but it's kind of open-ended because it never the person on the phone never speaks what i'm doing right now i did these heads like i said for that exercise because i needed to draw the guy drew more just trying to figure out his character because i don't really draw um men very much so it's quite difficult for me to sort of figure out how he looks i want him to be an older gentleman probably um, i don't know middle-aged not an older gentleman that sounded really stupid but like um maybe middle-aged even though this is quite hard to say, it deter people from thinking that maybe he's romantically involved with her and see him more as like an uncle kind of figure, which is what I'm intending. I was trying out some spooky drawings because obviously I'm going to be drawing some scary stuff, or trying to, and I was trying this out and I was just thinking like, does this look scary or does this just look silly? Like, 
I need to practice drawing more scary stuff. And again, with the tracing paper that I'm finding to be the style, um, I think I, I don't know if I showed you that, because I've decided that I'm going to do this comic with an ink pen because I always like the way my lines look with ink pens. I'm by ink pen, I mean brush pen, your absolute good work brain. If it wants to focus, it's focusing on the comic. There we go. Yeah, so it's it's a nice pen. And I, I've done comics in the past before. I did this series, a fantasy series that I never finished called Kingdom Come. And I really liked the way that those characters looked and the set looked and everything. So if I have images of that, I will put them here or something. I don't know if I still have them because I got really tired of that co um, project really quickly. And because of that, I've had fear that I won't be able to finish this type of work because ever since my graphic novel that I've shown you before I've never really finished a project as a whole I mean I've had my slice of life comic that has gone on for a year and a half and that was every weekday for a year and a half so that's like a lot of comics but but hopefully because I've done the script I never did a script for the other comic Kingdom Come I just went into it which was really um, silly of me because I think it just put me off because I, I didn't really know where the story was headed a little bit and recently after I started that project I had a full-time job so I, again that was a real deterrent for me to finish that one so I have a little bit of fear with this comic that I'm just not going to be able to complete it like I said I'm giving myself a month so giving yourself a deadline really helps because you can see you can aim for something I think it helps to have deadlines so today I'm just going to thumbnail out my pages what I'm doing here is taking the script pages and thumbnailing out where the panels would be just to see the way that the comic flows and if your eye tracks it well. So it's something that Scott McCloud speaks a lot about in his books. You've probably seen them, how to make comics and things like that and understanding comics. He has those books. I'll link that below. They're really helpful. I remember reading, I think it's Understanding com Comics before I made my graphic novel and it really pushed me to analyse everything I was doing and help me make a better product which I think was really useful and I might reread that sometime. Once I've d finished doing this, thumbnailing out each page, I'm probably gonna either scan it in and print it out or just use the tracing paper and trace over them and then do like a colour script. And what a colour script is, is basically say the beginning is all happy and light, so I'll have nice light colours and then something becomes dark, I have dark, and you see how the imagery goes together and the colours and the mood and feel of the piece works as a whole and it gives you direction on what to do next. So I think pre-planning all these things, all these little steps, really help you to complete a project. It's really handy to have around and I think if any of you are struggling on finishing or starting a comic project, then just do all these little steps and it really helps your mind focus on what you want to do. And because I was thumbnailing these out, I was like, oh, I like the idea of that um, panel, I want to draw that now, and it got me reinvigorated to keep going with the project, so it's good, it's all good. I'm going to continue drawing these and I'll probably be watching some YouTubes or listening to podcasts, but you guys will see my work, I guess. There we go. I really like these, this colour schemes and I'm excited to see where the thumbnails end up and so I can do my colour script so just gonna work on that. Um, if you're wondering how I'm doing my thumbnails, basically I have my script here so this is page one and then I have the panels and there's one, there's five panels here so it's a one, two, three, four, five. So then I would re read the panels and kind of whatever in here is like oh open with car shop, panel two is wood uh, area behind two figures of standing behind the car looking out towards the audience so looking out towards us I think like oh I want the first panel the establishing shot so to speak to be a large panel so we can establish the scene but I, I wouldn't have like a small little thing and then a big you know it makes sense to help the audience see where they are and in a large area slowly bring them into the story by slowly zooming in on the characters through the panels so the next one is going to be the two figures so it's a mid shot and then panel three is going to be the man walking by her interrupting her which is going to be even closer so we're kind of thinking of it in a cinematic sense a lot of these shots so the fourth shot is going to be a close-up of judy's face or the character's face i gonna rename the character again I think. If you think of it in the sense of a camera, we're getting right in her face which is very up close and personal. We're 
from an audience perspective, we're getting to know her, we're seeing that she's uncomfortable, but also the sense of like the shot will make us feel a little uneasy. So it's something that I like to think about um, when I watch films, the way that the scenes, the pacing is, I like to look at and all the angles of the shots and stuff because you can always reflect that within shots of your own comics. So I was thinking of looking at like cinematic angles and something that I found out the other day which is actually quite interesting, I was watching um, this review of a game and they said, they said they have the game like this, right? That's your view. So if you're playing as the character, you will always have the character in the middle and so you feel like that's you, it's centralised and you can see everything going on around the character. So other games that have the character like here, it kind of makes you feel disengaged with the content because it makes you think, oh I'm not that person, whereas this one is like you're controlling the world that you see around you as if you're seeing it from your perspective but that is over the shoulder shot or like if it changes up, you know it can be confusing for the viewer. Well, that was something really interesting to bring back to in my comics. When we want to engage with a character, I'll have her sort of in the central shot. And when we're kind of disengaging or distancing ourselves from her, then I'll have her like at the side or... That would be a really good tip that I learned and hopefully it translates to comics. Um, we're gonna find out. And you learn by experimenting, right? So there we go. Okay, time to finish up these thumbnails. Okay, so I finished thumbnailing out the panel flow but then it kind of turned into doing some thumbnails as I was reading it I got inspired to do tiny 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 thumbnails and I don't want to spoil anything so don't look so now I'm gonna just I think instead of copying this and making a color script I'm gonna start on the thumbnails because now I have the the layout I had to add like a few pages so this is added this is added this is added because it was very much like beginning the end like it needed some more pacey stuff because obviously in horror we need to build up the suspense a little bit so i'm going to start thumbnailing stuff you can watch a couple of those but obviously i don't want to spoil um too much of the story because i want you guys to read it and be like oh shit that happened you know so i was also thinking like maybe i'll do if i can finish this project then i'll do maybe a kickstarter or something for it but I don't know if there's going to be any interest in that and I tried to do a Kickstarter before but because of like some tax reasons I couldn't say I live in Gibraltar, tax me here so that was annoying so I might just have to say I'm in the UK and bite the bullet and see if they say anything funny I can just be like no I'm in Gibraltar but hopefully it'll be fine but yeah if I'm gonna do that then I don't know if people will be interested in that you know um, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in getting like a comic for as a reward for helping back a Kickstarter of this. I'm not sure. I'm really entirely not sure. I think if I finish this comic, and especially if I finish this comic within the deadline I've given myself, then that in itself is its own <laughs> reward. It sounds so cheesy, but I think it will really help boost my confidence in my own art and also I think like throughout this whole process it's really um, a good way to learn and I just I really want to learn more I want to become a better artist a better storyteller everything and I think constant improvement is my aim good morning everybody oh, it's Wednesday morning oh my gosh my throat sounds really bad my voice sounds bad so this is the morning of this video's upload I'm really sorry about my voice it's like scrucked uh, so yesterday we did these thumbnails, I mean quick super tiny thumbnails of just how the comic would look together. So yesterday I was going through doing bigger, larger thumbnails of each panel and then if I didn't like the sort of rough of it I went and did a little bit more detailed. Um, just help me out. like. This part of the process is basically problem solving and seeing how everything flows together. Looking at the the way the characters move, their body language, everything. Just if it works in a thumbnail, then it works, you know, in a larger scale for sure. So I'm just going to continue doing these. I kind of got a bit stuck yesterday. They take ages as well. Like It doesn't look like it should take very long, but because you are working everything out, it does take a long time, even though I um, did the the panel sizes and stuff, I was still looking at it like, what do I want 
you know, within that panel and I would take it and draw it larger and figure out how the characters might look and stuff. And here is more of them. And I realise there's not like much spooky goings on and it's already halfway through the book. Halfway through? A little less than halfway through. So I want to add some like spookiness somehow. And I'm just figuring it out. I think I need to do a layout of the... Sorry about the cars. Uh, I think I need to do a layout of what the house would look like. So I did like the bedroom here, which was obviously circular because it's a lighthouse. Spoiler alert, guys. Sorry, I think you're going to get a few spoilers from, you know, coming along with me on this process. I turned from working like that to working like this because I realised that I need to see these pages at a glance so I could just flick it easier. So I'm going to get along with one, two, eight final pages. So yeah, that is halfway, eight page eight. So there's 16 pages now. Woo! So I'm not going to do page 13, or the last page anyway. Well, there's two pages to go after this one. But I don't want to do it because I don't want spoilers, guys. So I'm just going to show you the process of like... The beginning kind of ones. I mean, you could probably pause and just look at what this is, but it doesn't really matter. You can spoil it if you want to spoil it. It's fine. But yeah, um, nearly finished. And then what I'm going to do is scan these pages and print them out and do a colour chart. Probably line them up side by side and print it out. And yeah, that will be good. So I just need to finish the final two pages and then I'll do that. And then I'll edit this vlog. Final stuff. Finished. I'll give you a little preview because I like this put this face. <laughs> it was really funny because I was just looking up horror films and looking at the different like scary faces women have. I realise that women are victims a lot in horror films and it kind of sucks. And kind of sucks that I played into that trope. But yeah, I mean, I like to write about women and draw women. So that's, you know, it's not too bad, I think. Right, sorry that this wasn't very interesting. Hopefully it was interesting seeing the process, the very beginning process of thumbnailing and figuring stuff out. Um, basically, what I'm going to do now is probably start filming for the next vlog, which will probably happen next week. Hopefully I'll be a little bit further along. So from this, I'll, like I said, I'll do the colour script. And then what I'll do is do the roughs of these, so bigger pages of these. So I hope to show you that. And it's all coming together, which is pretty cool. I'm hoping that there's enough story and it's not just like done. You know what I mean? Um, because it takes so long to draw it out. You can't really get a sense of the the pacing. Once I've done these, I'll just read through it and see like how long it kind of takes me to read. And hopefully there's, I don't need to add any pages. I might need to add a couple of pages just for the pacing, which would make sense, which is fine because honestly, um, when I wrote the script, it was quite, you know, you write the first draft and then I was like, yep, first draft done, you know? So if I go through this again, I'll probably see a lot of mistakes and I probably want to add a few pages. Like I said before, I'm a bit intimidated by this project and if I add more pages, then it's going to get bigger and bigger. And I think I want to stop myself from doing that because I have this um, problem when I start a project, I want to make it this great big thing and I've never really done like a short project so this will be a good like way to edit down my work and do feasible projects rather than I'm gonna make a giant graphic novel you know what I mean I, I want to do that well anyway thanks for watching guys please like and subscribe for more content and I will see you next time um, and again like I hope that you guys like these vlog style videos because I think I'm gonna do that I'll probably do like a challenge video for Friday or something but for now, yeah, this is it. So thanks for watching. Hopefully some more interesting stuff going on next time. Bye.